passionate about positivity. How you doing? How are things going? How's meditation? Guess what? We are at week 20. We are halfway through series two. Time is moving. Things are happening. Are you feeling it? Do you feel abundance coming towards you? Do you feel the universe is embracing you? Do you feel a calmness and peace within? Do you feel like things are starting to click? That people seem just a little more receptive? If you do, it is the fruits of your work and good effort. So, let's see, can I get you to see the table? Hey, Emil. There we go. There we go. Okay, so, let's begin with our breathing exercise. We're going to inhale through our nose, hold for a count of five, and then exhale through our mouth. Ready? Inhale. And we do that three times. So again, inhale. And one more time, inhale. So we do that to clear our mind chatter and to set ourselves down, to prepare us for the message, the lesson, the session. Good stuff, good stuff. thinking this one. Crown chakra. Crown chakra. So let's see what the guidance book says. Okay, crown chakra. So the theme of this card is grounding, assessing your value, sensitivities. Again, the theme of this card is grounding, assessing your values sensitivities be open to your wilderness here you will find the unexplainable raw beauty and divine guidance of who you really are i'm gonna read that again be open to your wilderness here you will find the unexplainable, raw beauty and divine guidance of who you really are. This mandala brings you the violet, silver, and golden rays of the crown chakra that connect you with universal consciousness. Your energy has aligned with that of the Council of Twelve, a highly evolved non-physical team of masters overseeing the evolution of humanity's heart-centered consciousness. 
It is important to note this occurrence happens when one's crown and heart have expanded to activate the pure love of Christ's consciousness. This enables one to further achieve their mission, recognize your divinity, and live it. This chakra can also signify attachment to the physical world, feeling of emotional disconnection, and a resignation to living life this way. However, you will soon begin to feel more connected and at one with yourself and with the universe. Reevaluate what is important to you in your physical world, the things you have surrounded yourself with and have come to love, have fulfilled their purpose and will give way to a greater way of, build, of being. For you, this time is now. You have the ability and the tools within to access higher consciousness. Having the intention to do so is enough. The energy, the energy of this mandala is at your side during this heightened time and reminds you that the timing is perfect for those anchoring the light within the planet, for those just beginning to understand their light. Though time is nigh, that's it. Though time is nigh. Odd ending. Let me read the last couple of sentences again. The energy of this mandala is at your side during this heightened time and reminds you that the time is perfect for those anchoring the light within the planet and for those just beginning to understand their light. Thou time is nigh. Thou time is nigh. Crown chakra. Okay, so... I think this card is divine timing. And I'm saying that because I just told you about how we're halfway through the series. So, and I was asking you, were you starting to feel that things were connecting for you, that abundance, that you were attracting the abundance because we were halfway through the series. And so then the card is talking about the crown chakra and it's talking about the same pretty much things, you know, that we are recognizing our light within. And we are working with the light within to understand the light within, to allow the light within to shine. An intention is enough to attract the things that we want in our life. The goodness, the abundance, the contentment, the higher vibration. We are allowing things that have fulfilled their purpose, values, thought processes, traditions, procedures what was previously important to us. We are reevaluating those things to refine what we want happiness and abundance to look like for us. And it's really interesting because I've been having these thoughts for the last few days about um, happiness, you know? And I was like... I don't understand why someone would be envious or jealous. And let me clarify, just hear me out here for a second. And the reason why I don't understand that is because if that person is happy, if that person is attracting the abundance and the goodness that they want for their life, 
we're all unique individuals. And I think we get caught up in a facade that our happiness are similar to other people. Our happiness lies in living our best life. Our happiness lies in the things that make us beam, that challenge our mind and add vibrance to our passion, things that just make us feel good and we're unique. No two people are the same. Now you might have similarities, similar desires, but there's differences. So as someone is living their best life, as someone is attracting abundance, as someone is feeling good about their accomplishments and who they are, let's be a cheerleader for them. Because in cheer, being a cheerleader for them, being happy for their accomplishments and abundance, that's raising our vibration. That's helping us get a little bit closer to that refined desire that we've been working to figure out. We've been looking at how we do things, what's important to us, you know, our thought processes, how, how things, disappointment and annoyances, you know, detract from our well-being. So we've been working on those things to discard them, to just be focused on the good, to be focused on positive energy, to be focused on affirmations, to be intentional with our thoughts, to be purposeful with our efforts. So we've been working on those things to attract our abundance and to get us closer to what makes us happy. So happiness looks different for you than it does for your best friend or your co-worker, or a celebrity. So make your life what you want it to be. With your intentions. With your thought processes. With your focus. So, grounding, assessing your values and sensitivities. Be open to the wilderness. Here, you will find the unexplainable new beauty and divine guidance of who you really are. That's something to meditate. On. accepting, loving, and embracing who you really are. Week 20. Whoa. All right. Let's see what we're going to get for our affirmation card to accompany that. I think this one. Hmm. It says, forgiveness helps me to let go and move on with my life. Open up to new and loving experiences. It is a compliment. As we let go, of the processes, the thoughts, the actions, the efforts that are no longer of value to us, that no longer serve us, that we've outgrown, that we acknowledge no longer have a purpose 
in the direction we are traveling that do not enhance the life that we are designing, it will require us to have some forgiveness. Because you will need to forgive. Forgiving is for you. Forgiving assists you in letting go of something. Forgiving is the step towards healing from something. So as we heal, we're more open and loving to new experiences. We're going to embrace the wilderness within us and let that light shine. Crown chakra. Have a good week. Let's do it again next week.